Hello, I'm Nobby Clark. Welcome to my workshop. Um, my project today is to make a Morse Taper 2. Um, I'll show you in a minute uh, what the uh, project uh, is actually all about. Um, to set this up, um, I'm following uh, something I, I saw uh, on YouTube uh, to get the correct angle for the taper and I'm using uh, my Morse Taper 2 ER32 collet chuck. I'm going to gently nip that up in the chuck very very gently so I don't damage the threads although this isn't going to obviously be turned so it shouldn't damage anything here and I'm going to bring in the tailstock quill um, just to grip the end of this so that and nothing moves and then using as you can see a, a clock gauge I can wind that in put some preload on it bring that round to zero and then move the compound across to check the angle um, I'm cheating a bit I've already done this because it does actually take quite a long time to set this up um, the the angle of the taper is round about uh, one and a half degrees but it needed you know some sort of micro adjustment to to get that right for this particular particular project which you'll see in a, a minute the, the having this absolutely correct uh, doesn't really matter too much but I want to get it as accurate as I can and when I've got it within about half a thousandth so this is a, a, a one thousandths um, Mercer dial anyway once we've got that set wind that back and take the uh, clock gauge out very carefully move that away and now I can take the more taper 2 out because my angle is set and everything is locked I've got the compound locked in in place so we'll remove that Move the tail stop back a bit. Now the part um, I'm turning is a piece of wood. Um, it's well, it's sort of a, a wooden dowel rod, but in fact I went to the local DIY store to buy um, a piece of, of dowel suitable uh, for this job, and to get a piece of dowel rod of the right sort of, of diameter that I wanted. Uh, it was going to be incredibly expensive. I know wood has become very, very expensive now, um, and to buy a, a suitable piece of dial in the, the length it's supplied uh, in the UK was going to cost about £13. So what I opted for in the end was uh, a broom handle. <laughs> um, I went to the section where the broom handles were and I, I searched through um, a big pile of um, handles there to find one that was uh, you know nice well reasonably straight uh, I don't suppose broom handles have to be made absolutely straight but I found the best one I possibly could and also one where um, the grain was running in the in the right direction um, some of them had the grain sort of running slightly across I know the grain has to run in in, in sort of straight lines, even on a broom handle, it will just snap. But I'm going to mount this into the chuck, and what I've done is I've put some bits of copper here to protect the uh, the piece of wood so that it doesn't squeeze into it. And putting um, these little bits of copper in, I found you need about four hands to be able to do it without dropping all the bits of copper down in inside the uh, the lathe. So. I've just held them on with an elastic band just to get them in in the right position for me uh, while I, I tighten the, the chuck up. 
and sort of gently nip that up. That's it, tighten that in. Doesn't need to be too tight because there's not going to be a huge amount of pressure on it, but I think that's okay. Now the next stage is um, making sure that this runs straight basically, so using the clock gauge again, let's pop that back in again. Bring that to the, the end of the piece of wood, wind that in, put some preload on it. Actually, this, this, this actually is not too bad. Um, I'm trying to find the high spot. I know I'm not going to get it perfect, but that doesn't really matter because um, once I, I start turning it, that will establish the taper and the back end of this. You'll see in a moment uh, what that is. But let's just move that in a little bit more. Just get it running it as best. Oh no, I'm not going to get it running perfect because the, the wood. I'm, I'm guessing it is not completely round, and I'm sure it's a, probably an oval shape. Well, one of these I made before. This is about as good as I got it actually. So I'm going to settle for that. Now we can run the lathe and, and actually I can line that up. There's something on the back of the lathe. That's just that's not too bad. Let's run the lathe and, and see how it looks. <laughs> that's actually it's not too bad. So Let's get the clock gauge out of the way, don't need that anymore. I've taken the, the dead centre out and replacing it with a drill chuck so I can put a the centre into the end of the wood. Just Putting my safety glasses on. Oops, I'm sorry I knocked the camera then. Sorry about that. Let's take the... Uh, centre drill out and I'll replace that with my revolving centre and wind the quill right forward put a bit of load on that and we'll lock that in now what I need to do is to turn the tool post around slightly so that we get the, the tool in, in place let me run this in to give me plenty of room to cut the taper so that the compound here doesn't hit the the tail stock I think what I do need to do actually is um, is bring that tool out 
a bit more because this is a, a Morse taper too. This is obviously going to end up with a very, very thin uh, taper. And to make sure that I've got enough room um, to move the, the, the cross slide over. So I'm just going to move the tool a little bit further out. Let's move that out a bit more. I don't really like having that much pulled out, but I'm only cutting a piece of wood here, so it's it's not going to be a lot of resistance against this tool. So I don't think that's going to really going to be a problem. Let's just tighten that up. Down and you can uh, move that in and gradually make sort of contact with it. Now, what I'm also going to do um, to give me or give myself a guide to measure. Uh, that the small end of the taper is to use um, this little uh, caliper and bring that in so that I can test this as I as I turn it. Um, now, for, for what I'm making here, um, this is not doesn't have to follow the the actual diameter of this um, it needs to be made a, a little bit smaller and I'll show you the reason for this this is what I'm making um, it's a, a morse taper cleaning stick um, so that you can clean in inside the, the, the morse taper um, I made this one um, yesterday now this is for um, a Morse Taper 3, um, so I can use this on my uh, the spindle on my milling machine and on my Chinese mini lathe. The, uh, the head stock on that is Morse Taper 3 as well. Um, I'm making a Morse Taper 2 version for the big lathe where the tail stock quill and the head stock taper are both um, Morse Taper 2, the Chinese mini lathes stock is also the same so I, I need two of these and with this one I made the the, the taper here which, which it does happen to be the same angle as the most taper too and I've just attached some strips of felt self adhesive felt all the way around it um, this one I'm going to have to uh, machine down a bit more um, because the uh, I did make it smaller, but I didn't really make it small enough, so um, I do need to um, reduce the, the diameter of the taper itself, uh, so that when I've got these strips on, these will obviously just pull off and I can put new ones on. Um, and by using self-adhesive um, strips of felt, uh, once they, they get damaged or dirty or, or whatever, they can just be peeled off and just replaced with, with new ones. So let's proceed. Um, I won't show the, the, the total machining of this because it's going to be a bit boring. So um, I'll just show you the start and then um, come back to it uh, uh, when I, I get sort of nearer to size. Um, I've put a mark on here with a pencil. Um, that's the sort of roughly the finish point. Um, so I could get a, a sort of a guide for myself on, on how far to, to cut it down. Anyway, let's let's have a go.
just going to stop there for a, for a bit. Um, during that, you probably noticed I had to stop for a, a while because I hadn't got the um, the compound slide up in the right position to give me uh, enough travel. So I just had to, to reset that. And in fact, when I made the the more taper three version, uh, the amount of travel that this lathe has on the on the top slide isn't very much. It would only cut um, down to about here. So I machined it down to um, the, the, the right size, basically, um, and then moved the uh, the carriage along, and then just machined out the other end, and which is you know more than one way of doing this. So it, it didn't. It, so the two cuts joined, and I had the the, the right sort of taper all the way through. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll cut away from this now. Um, I don't want to bore you by showing you me machining this right down to size. It's going to take quite a long time because it, it's obviously a, only a Morse taper too, quite thin, so it'll be quite a slow job. So um, I'll bring you back when um, I've either done that or I'm, I'm very near to it. Cheers for now. Hello, um, welcome back to part two. Um, we're almost down to size now. Um, what I've done is um, try to estimate or guesstimate the thickness of the pieces of felt and then readjust the, the caliper here um, to give me a, a sort of a better idea of size. So we, we're still a, a, a little way still to go. So let's sort of carry on machining. I mean, obviously, I haven't got to worry about getting it incredibly accurate because the thing with the um, the the, the most tapers, the, the three and the two as well, is that they when you push them into um, the, the female part of the of the taper on the mill spindle and on the tail stock is that they don't go all the way in so um, that, that allows for a, a little bit of error on, on, on the part of the, the, the diameter of the, the taper. Well let's have a, do a bit more machining and see if I can sort of get it down the, uh, nearer to size. And the great thing about using uh, the calipers, of course, you can actually use this while um, the, the part is moving. Um, you, you couldn't do this with uh, anything else, if there only a gauge or uh, a micrometer. And it would send it flying across the workshop. But that's the, the joy of that side, it's, it's perfect for this sort of job.
that's going to be fine. I'm just going to make one more pass. Just for two or three fail or something like that. Hopefully that's it. I'm going to move the, the tool out of the way. In fact, the safest thing is to take it out so I don't skewer myself on it. Clean up with some with some sandpaper. Not that it really matters much. This is 240 grit. It's not quite smooth. I might, I'm sure that um, carbide lathe tools are not the ideal thing to uh, to machine wood with. I was getting uh, quite a, a ragged edge on the wood, but uh, by sanding it down, that's given it uh, actually quite a nice finish. Now as I have to uh, re-machine the, the size 3 uh, wooden taper I've made, um, I've torn a couple of the pieces of uh, felt off, the, off that particular one and as an experiment I'm going to Take this out. <laughs> oh, first, remove the, uh, the centre there. Take this out. So the pieces of felt that are pulled off it. Um, just as an experiment to see, actually, if it fits the the taper on here. Um, if I can just gently hold those in place. I know that they need to be st uh, st stuck back on, but if I very carefully insert those in, that, yeah, lovely, it goes all the way in. Um, really goes in there as far as I would expect it to. So with um, three or four pieces of, of that material on there, that's, that's going to do the job. So, very pleased with that actually, it's, it's going to work out fine. All I need to do now is to do the same thing with the, you see I've torn the bits off there, with the, uh, the Morse Taper 3. Well I think that's, that's uh, come out quite nicely. Obviously leaving a bit on the back gives you a handle, you know, to put it in and twist it round. Uh, to give the uh, 
and we'll take her a nice clean out. So quite happy with that. It's worked out uh, quite nicely. Um, you can buy um, Morse tape uh, cleaning sticks. Um, one of the companies I buy quite a lot of bits and pieces from sell them. I think that the ones they make, this part is made out of, um, it, it looked like sort of uh, possibly nylon material. Um, bearing in mind, you know, if you were buying a piece of um, proper beach uh, dowel rod and machining it down I mean the, the sheet of felt which will make dozens of replacements for this only cost me about a pound from a craft shop um, so that's not an expensive item the the one you can buy is just a little under ten pounds um, I guess that's quite reasonable really but the thing is that um, I like a challenge, I like to make things, well, I have a workshop and I've got my lathe, if, if I can make uh, a tool I much prefer to do that rather than, than buy something, um, so um, I'm quite pleased with the end result. Um, but I, I'll wind this up now, I've got to get the vacuum cleaner, it's made an incredible mess, all this uh, sawdust everywhere, obviously it's not, uh, obviously this could you know, get into your mouth or into your nose, but it's not as bad as a, a swarf and bits of steel. But it does really make a mess of the lay, so I've got to give it a really good uh, vacuum up um, when I've finished. But anyway, thank you very, very much for joining me uh, in the workshop today. Uh, thank you also for all the uh, subscribers to my channel, um, and I hope that if you haven't subscribed already, that uh, you do me the honour of subscribing to the channel and uh, keep the comments coming. Um, I mean, I'm learning a lot from other YouTubers, the, the more experienced um, members on YouTube that uh, have been helping me out with uh, uh, lots of advice um, on things I'm doing in the workshop. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me and bye bye for now.